Then I'll go back into ZBrush and in the texture palette I'm going to press the import button, import that image. So then I'll go into the tool palette, expand texture map, click on this and select my pattern. And you can see now it's applied as a texture to uh, my eyes. So the texture is kind of like wrapping paper. If I subdivide the model, it's not going to affect the texture at all. It's just basically wrapping paper that's applied over the top of the model. So I can subdivide this and I'm going to get it up to, let's say, 2 million. Now is a good time to save. And now it's just a matter of converting this texture, the light and dark colors of the texture, into a mask so that I can actually bring out on the surface this uh, hex tile pattern. So to do that, I need to make sure, first of all, that I've subdivided so I have a lot of polygons. Two million should work. Um, then I need to go to the polypaint subpalette of the tool palette and press polypaint from texture. And that essentially, oops, I need to make sure that RGB is turned on. And then polypaint from texture. And that converts the texture into polypainted uh, information. So in other words, if I could start blurring this, you can see that the, the paint on the, on the surface is actually getting blurred. If I turn my texture back on, you can see that the texture map is kind of like a wrapping paper, but the polypaint is actually uh, drawn right onto the surface, so the color is applied right to the vertices of the surface. I'm going to press undo a few times to get rid of that blurring. And then the last thing I need to do is create a mask from this polypaint. So you can't create a mask from a texture, but you can from polypaint. That's why I need to convert the texture into a polypaint. So then I'll go down to the masking subpalette and choose mask by color, mask by intensity. And if I turn off polypaint, I go up here to the subtool palette, turn off polypaint, you can see there's my mask. So I can turn the solo button off and we can see the mask applied. And I'm going to switch to the inflate brush and lower the Z intensity and start brushing over the surface to create that hexagon pattern. If I press Control H, it hides the mask so you can just see the pattern on the surface. So I'll draw with the inflate brush, but I'll also do a little bit of smoothing, which rounds the edges of each of the facets, making it look more natural. Let's turn on solo here. And more organic. There's some artifacts in the mask, but I think they actually kind of help to make it look more natural and less like computer generated. Um, so the mask is not completely perfect, but if you make things too perfect, they tend to look really boring and not very natural. I want to make sure that I don't go overboard with the inflate brush because I don't want, you know, the sides of one facet kind of overlapping with the sides of another one. Uh, that'll cause problems when I finally render it. It just makes for a very um, messy model. So. That's why I'm kind of drawing and smoothing and drawing and smoothing over and over again. Now there is another way to create a hex uh, pattern in ZBrush and that's by using the Noise Maker plugin which is found in the Surfaces palette. So it's the Noise Maker plugin. Uh, the main reason I'm not doing that in this version is it's actually a bit harder to use than this method uh, because this method, you know, as long as you have an understanding of Photoshop and how to generate UVs and use Photoshop to paint the textures, um, it's pretty straightforward. There's some button clicking at the end which involves, you know, converting, bringing in the texture, converting the texture into a polypaint, and then converting the polypaint into the mask. And that does seem, seem tedious. But the Noisemaker plugin is not very intuitive. And it also crashes a lot. It's very unstable. For some reason in this latest version, it's, I've had it crash on me almost every single time. So I'm opting to use this method instead of Noisemaker uh, for that reason, because I know this will actually work. Let's turn off the solo button and take a look. So you can see how much that makes a huge difference in the look of the fly by adding, that, uh, adding the facets to the eye. Suddenly it starts to really look 
like an insect instead of a bunch of blobs of polygons, which is kind of nice. And the next stage that we need to do after this is just uh, fine detailing. So it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of kind of experimenting and playing with ideas, but I think since we have the basic shapes pretty much in place, uh, we can uh, start to detail. I know for a fact that I'm going to want to change the structure of this mouth. I don't think it's quite right yet. Um, some of these other parts I need to examine more carefully in my reference, and then I can handle all that while I'm detailing. And um, after detailing, of course, then we can start adding things like the hair.